Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here today for the uh, number 10 Friday branch, and I'm super excited because today we only have uh, girls on the stage. So, and you see all very beautiful uh, girls. Uh, and uh, the topic uh, this time uh, will be um, a, a broad and easy, easy topic, easy. Uh, but uh, but uh, we could uh, talk about it for hours, actually. Um, and uh, the, the topic is the road ahead to making web, web free um, mainstream, which means adopted by, by the masses. Uh, and I will talk uh, about it uh, with uh, um, with Maria Paola, uh, Michelle, and Emily. Um, all of them are uh, super like into blockchain, uh, and uh, but they come from different uh, backgrounds and from different projects. Uh, and uh, um, then I will now let the stage to to them to present uh, themselves, uh, and um, in this way we can uh, we can start the uh, the conversation. Uh, I will start uh, by Michelle. So, yes. Yeah, good morning. It's, it's like really early here in Belgium. Um, well, for me at least. Um, so yes, my name is Michel and um, I work with Ethereum Swarm. Um, right now I'm basically uh, helping to shape the communications and the brand and the storytelling. Um, yeah, I've been in this space for uh, quite a long time. I remember uh, mining some Bitcoin on a laptop, but I had to stop because it was basically stalling my entire system and the fans were going crazy. Um, but anyway, um, I really got back into crypto with Ethereum in, in 16. Um, is, is that enough? Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, can you spend uh, just a few words about it, Swarm? So what is this project about? Yeah, so, so um, Ethereum, Ethereum was envisioned as the world's computer, which has three uh, parts, like a processor, uh, memory, and storage. And, um, well, basically, sorry, it's like, it's processing, messaging, and storage. And um, so the messaging part is Whisper, and the storage part uh, is Swarm. And I'm working with like the decentralized storage project, which is Ethereum Swarm. Um, basically, the idea is to complete the the computer, the world computer, um, Ethereum. So yeah, yeah, you know, we can do like fun stuff on on top of it, right? Um, and yeah, we're trying to finish that um, adventure because yeah, it's not even like proven that it will work eventually. And this is what I think is the most exciting thing about this space. Um, you know, yeah. it's like we're doing brand new stuff, and nobody has yeah. done this before. And I'm I'm really really happy to be to play a small part in that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Michelle. We can uh, go ahead with uh, uh, Emily, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, well, thank you so much for having me. First of all, I'm really happy to join this panel of really of OGs. You know, that, that is so nice. Uh, um, so I work at PwC Smart Contract Assurance, and so. You know, many people might know PwC for the financial audits and being more a, a legacy actor, right? Um, but we've seen a lot of promise in the blockchain space, and we thought that actually in smart contract audits, so not financial audits, but technical audits, uh, there was a lot of opportunities to really bring trust in the blockchain ecosystem. And so what we do a lot is working with DeFi projects uh, who need, you know, a lot of security on their smart contracts and who need to bring trust to the investors and the users of those system. So this is really what we're trying to do then. Perfect. Thank you, Mich uh, Thank you, Emily. And uh, now, um, MP, the real MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hey. Uh, so I'm Maria Paula, MP for short. I'm Argentinian, but living in Berlin for a very long time. And I work at Golem, which is, as Mich uh, you know, I'm tagging in uh, to Michelle's narrative of the world computer. We're actually the processor part. Golem is a P2P marketplace for digital idle uh, resources, including computer power. So basically, you can build applications probably using a storage from Swarm and then compute from Golem. So yeah, we have been in Web3 since Ethereum's inception, actually. Um, uh, yeah, the project started in 2014 
and um, also the uh, in my free time as well i i research art and blockchain and have a grassroots organization for the development of web3 technologies so super happy to be here Perfect. And uh, then now, uh, as usual, uh, my ad audience uh, know that I always ask uh, a quick question to break the ice. So uh, the question in this case is, uh, how do you imagine yourself in 20 years? Uh, we will start again from, uh, from Michelle. Michelle? I think she's blocked. So Emily, we can start from you, maybe. <laughs> we were both trying to unmute. <laughs> um, yeah. So in 20 years, I I kind of would like to see myself in a world that is borderless. Um, I don't know if you remember this book by Thomas Friedman, The World is Flat in two, 2005. And I really hope that this can come through, you know, uh, that you know, we would be this level playing field where anyone in the world can, you know, engage in all sorts of business activities wherever, you know, where they come from or the money they have or the access they have, that everybody could be connected. And I really hope that blockchain could power, you know, that type of innovation. Perfect. Thank you. And Maria Paula, then, since uh, we are waiting for Michelle to come back. Yeah, definitely. I, I actually have a personal roadmap. And of course, you know, I would like to see the new internet completely take over. Uh, but also in 20 years, I probably see myself retired, uh, still researching about, uh, you know, technology and art. And probably I, my dream is to become some kind of an art collector or you know work on the um, visual arts field but more on the research side which is super interesting to see also uh, with what when it uh, overlaps with what three technologies thank you and tupac will be there as well no but maybe not in 20 years but we hope for so <laughs> Hoping for he uh, his race his breed is actually quite long uh, for longevity. So maybe <laughs> okay, Michelle, welcome back on the screen. Yes, yeah, something uh, went terribly yeah. wrong with my. But it's the it's the you know uh, prettiness of the live. So uh, <laughs> so can you tell us uh, how do you see yourself in twenty years? Um, I will be a grandmother. I think, um, but um, you know, if you mean in the space, I have like literally no idea whatsoever. I, I hope I still have. I hope I still have a, a tons of friends in in in, in the space because you know I'm, these are like my uh, the people I love the most. I would say yeah. currently. Um, so yeah, I, I basically hope that we can all hang out somewhere in I don't know on a tropical island or maybe in a virtual reality. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you you know, yeah. I, I like to hug in in, in real reality. Yeah, me know. too. That's why this COVID, uh, this pandemic is getting yeah, is making me crazy because I'm super, you know. Yeah, we, we even have in in in, um, in Flemish or in Dutch, we even have like an expression for it. It's like skin hunger. Where you get like hungry for? I know it sounds yeah. like yes, weird, but <laughs> it sounds a lot <laughs> less um, sexual. But yes, um, I don't know. I have no idea. Sorry, I have no idea. I think oh, that's it, cool. that's I, I would cool. be happy to know what next year will bring in in this technology, yeah. technology and in and in because probably the next you know viral thing comes comes along and everybody jumps on that train and and goes crazy again. So yeah. So we can uh, then uh, now start with the main discussion that, as I mentioned, is about um, the Web3 and um, blockchain adoption. Uh, so um, first of all, I want to ask uh, to all of uh, you, uh, which was the first, uh, um, your first approach to blockchain? Uh, so when and how? So we can start uh, from Emily. OK. Um, so yeah, the, my first contact with blockchain and crypto was actually pretty late compared to the others here. I was in 2016 
and I was studying in, uh, in Austin, Texas, which is kind of a hub for technology, for crypto, for libertarians and anarchists and so on. And so I kind of, you know, was in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, you know, in this group this community so to say and then you know people were talking about bitcoin about crypto and i remember that the first time so i went back home and i you know i googled blockchain you know what is bitcoin what is it and i read this explanation and it was so complicated and <laughs> it was really and it started bugging me a little bit and so i was writing my master thesis on sustainable finance and i decided to drop it to instead write it on on bitcoin and how that works and how cryptocurrencies work and, and what they can do for us. And this is really when I caught the bug and you know, right out of university, I started working in it and never stopped since. Perfect. That's, that's really, I mean, also because you are young and that's normal. I mean, you are younger maybe than the other uh, and, and me like you. Uh, but then uh, uh, let's continue with Michelle who already mentioned that she was <laughs> Mining. <laughs> yes. Well, so so I, I always uh, so I always been very much interested in cryptography and in and in peer to peer technologies. This basically this means I was downloading um, MP3s uh, from people on Napster. That's that's basically me being interested in peer to peer. And um, so, but the, yeah, that's that's really that that was to me like the power of 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 this peer to peer thing, right? We're like, oh, we all together we can create something so valuable, you know, by sharing resources and and, and such. Um, so, so I would say that was basically my first encounter with you know what we are doing now all together in crypto. And um, um, yeah, then of course they had some Bitcoin mining, which was just silly because you know it was like the website was so bad. It was basically a forum post, and it, they said like, "You run this software on your own risk," uh, and and I always had like a spare computer, so I so I ran it, and it, and that that yeah, if I remember correctly, that was Bitcoin. But I just after a day, I just removed it from my computer because it was blocking everything, and yeah. I thought it was stupid, you know. And then my next encounter with Bitcoin was when I I don't know I bought some in I don't know like twelve or thirteen something like that. But anyway, to me, the big thing, um, the, the big breakthrough for me was Ethereum. I was like, like finally, yeah. we can do this. Uh, because so, so many things were missing, and even Bitcoin was, it's, if you look at it, Bitcoin is rather stupid, right? It, it can't do anything. So it's, I mean, I mean it's, it's genius in its simplicity, but you, there's not a lot you can do with it. You can send money to each other, and that's where it basically stops. And then... Yeah, but with Ethereum, we, we really have a peer-to-peer -peer computer that yeah. we, we can all use to do, you know, to create apps on top of it. And so to me, that was like the breakthrough. I was working in, in um, at the city of Antwerp in, in like a digital lab, and we immediately saw like, oh, this is going to change how we govern a city or how we do things. Uh, but then it's like really cool because you were in Austin, and that, but then we worked, then I started to work with Arcade City, who also were based in Austin, or at least they were like very um, active there. And then, and then, um, and then we did Swarm City, like uh, you know, a, a true DAP on top of Ethereum, um, you know, with an ICO and everything. So that was a lot of fun. So to me, that was like my the big introduction to to crypto. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Maria Paula. Yeah, sure. For me, I actually heard uh, I. I heard from Bitcoin before, of course, but in 2016, I actually was helping uh, and mentoring a, a kid from Iraq here in Germany. And I took him to an office to learn about blockchain uh, that where one of my friends uh, used to work. And the guy that ended up explaining blockchain was actually Gavin Wood. I had no idea uh, back in the day, but I was like, wow, this guy, you know, like, I like this technology. How can I get involved? And I, you know, a year later or so, I actually applied for a job at Web3 Foundation and got it. So yeah, uh, it was pretty serendipitous. Cool, guys. And and what do you think, Maria Paula? Things uh, ever changed uh, since then? I mean, uh, you all of you started from a different point and in a different time. So I don't think. I mean. 
uh, in the blockchain space and in Web3 uh, in general, uh, things uh, change uh, like super fastly. So in uh, also in one month, uh, something can completely change. But uh, um, what do you think uh, are the major change uh, changes that you saw in the last couple of years? For example? Yeah, so it's really, really rewarding that after all these years working in blockchain, I am finally seeing some genuine, uh, both corporate and user validation. So, you know, thanks to DeFi, there's a high influx yeah. of users joining cryptocurrencies, and that's fantastic. Then we have the creator economy being tapped onto NFTs, and that's also amazing. People are able to pay, you know, to never again owe rent which is, you know, so rewarding and as well, you know, corporate adoption, whereas it is for hedging, uh, you know, part of the treasury in Bitcoin uh, as, you know, as a way to uh, protect themselves uh, against uh, federal reserve fluctuations and so on, or, uh, you know, introducing blockchain technologies, but truly into their uh, stack and not only, a, a, you know, part of, you know, let's say, you know, the innovation department, which happened before, you know, there, there always have been big announcements, uh, you know, like this corporation uses blockchain and this corporation uses blockchain. And then you would discover that it was like the tiny innovation department and just for permission. Yeah. Right now we're, you, we're seeing true adoption. Yeah. Uh, Semi-lease uh, actually scope of work indicates. So, you know, that's so rewarding for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, and I also, another thing that uh, I uh, see as a, a big change is uh, the, uh, there is um, larger attention to UX uh, uh, for the users uh, because before uh, the UX, especially in, in DeFi, uh, was, was quite bad. Now, uh, you know, they are, uh, projects are, are putting more attention Is it my connection? No, we or... lost the host, I think. Hello? Yeah, we lost the host. Oh. <laughs> Are you with us, Maria? I'll, I'll send her a telegram. Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe I can continue yeah, then. Yeah, Emily, I was just yeah. about to ask, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, MP, I really agree with what you said, you know, before about the corporates, you know, it was like, um, the innovation department or the proof of concept and you would see like you know these guys getting together and doing a white paper and then oh this and that and then and then nothing right and no one was really ready to trust blockchain technology and to actually you know put their operations on it and i think that now we're really on the verge of seeing those big consortia those big you know those big corporates actually using it to create competition systems and that i think is so so promising um, so that is to you know just to to respond to what you were saying, and so and to tap to your to your response, uh, you know the thing with POCs is that they look very promising and very PR like, but when you're you know as Michelle or I probably working constantly with POCs, a POC can be just like you know a text that has like a flow diagram, and that's so uh, trivial. Of course, you know it, like you can advertise something that's more tangible than an uh, announcement of an announcement but it's like we have to understand that pocs are you know just quite trivial in the context of blockchain and how fast are things growing mm -hmm. yeah definitely mm -hmm. and so um yeah so to answer maria's question so what i saw changing from when i arrived uh, in the blockchain space until now it's actually this whole you know, it was the this libertarian rebels who were using bitcoins to, because they didn't want to be traced, and those privacy enthusiasts, and that was really, and that was initially what attracted me to it. Kind of the freedom fighters, rebels, and th that was so exciting to me, right? And now it's completely changed. I mean, you have everyone and their grandma involved in it, <laughs> and even PwC, right? And now I joined a big corporate and we are in the business of bringing trust and it's completely different, right? The transparency and the the image associated, you know, for, for the grand public, the, the grand audience, how they perceive it has completely changed. 
Well, I'm I'm still I'm still like very much surrounded by cypherpunks and anarchists and, and so I mean uh, but I know I know what you mean. To me, the biggest thing that changed was basically my my idea of this technology. Like when I saw Ethereum's website for the first time, I was so excited because we felt like, oh my god, let's start building on this thing because you know this is beautiful, right? And then I discovered slowly but surely I discovered like, oops, it's not ready yet. Like the this, this, like all these parts are really not working. And 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 then, for instance, the technology like Whisper, I remember that messages came in in the wrong order and stuff like that. So it was it was like literally like, you know, we have to. Basically, I discovered a space with tons of ideas and theories and, and science, but you know that needs so much much execution still. And, and I'm speaking about uh, Swarm as well. Um, Swarm is, is a brilliant idea, and theoretically uh, it's, it's great. But sorry, I have a terrible feedback now. Um, but we we still have to build all these tools. And and if you say like, for instance, like you know UX changed, okay. But still, it sucks, right? To be honest, if I do, if I do, like, if I go to, I don't know, even Uniswap. Uniswap is brilliant. I mean, I mean, that I'm, I'm not calling them out, but but a lot of things I touch are just it just sucks, right? Like, like you know, like we have to we have to do so much more to make sure that that normal like normal people will use this and and will be able to be in be in control of their data and and their privacy, as you said. So, you know, that would be the, a good question. Like, where do I see myself in 20 years? I'm probably complaining like I'm doing now that stuff isn't user-friendly enough yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. By the way. Uh, thank you, guys. But I listen everything. I just disappeared from the screen. I didn't, I, actually, it was nice to see all of you, you three, without my face uh, but <laughs> but we can go we can go ahead uh, with the next question um so we talked about we use always this word mainstream right but in the end what does mean how do we intend mainstream uh, i will i would uh, ask, uh, ask this to maria paola mm -hmm. um what do you think mainstream means uh, when, when it is widely used as a word. Mainstream is twofold, in my opinion. Mainstream is when not only when uh, people from TikTok are talking about Doge, for example, right now, but mainstream means also when there is wider adoption and wider credibility. And this includes, as I said in the previous answer as well, corporate credibility, because, you know, even if we're trying right now to build new institutions and build a new internet, we are still highly dependent on uh, corporations and technology from those corporations as well. And when those corporations start finding the value in this alternative internet and implementing it and understanding that there is more than what they have been building, that's when I think uh, mainstream can gain credibility, uh, you know, besides being, you know, like an, a fantastic alternative economy with all the potential to replace the current economy. I think that there, there should be some kind of interdependence between both worlds. And that's, you know, that's when mainstream would come into play, which yeah. is what's happening now, actually. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, and uh, what, what do you girls think about it? Are you do you agree with the muted? Okay, okay. so maybe <laughs> I'll just unmute myself. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, mainstream. I think to me is when it becomes kind of a black box, right? Is when it works, people know it works, and actually people don't even talk about blockchain or whatever. It's like when you use a car, you press the gas pedal, it goes forward, the brakes, it stops. You don't want to know how anything works under the hood, right? And I think blockchain would be mainstream when, you know, for example, you go voting uh, in, the, yeah. in the elections, and you don't even know that it's, it's blockchain being used. It just works like yeah. any other IT system. I think yeah, that, that technology is, is hidden, basically. I mean, you can know it, and if you want, you can learn about it and understand it. But if you don't, you mm. don't care, 
you use it like my mom use, uh, uses Google, for example. She doesn't even know exactly. how. <laughs> exactly. But having this trust that it's going to deliver, and that is really, really important to me. Yeah. However, I think that uh, uh, right now we are still in a phase uh, where education is fundamental because uh, to to build uh, trust, uh, trust is is is, uh, is something that you need uh, to get uh, uh, mass adoption. And uh, if you want to need trust, uh, you need to educate. People have to understand that this is uh, trustful. Also, because uh, usually um, blockchain means crypto, so. You work in blockchain ah you produce bitcoin no uh, you know and the crypto is bad because whoa it's used to pay for you know drugs on the internet so can you comment on this michelle maybe because you yes. are <laughs> yes i was thinking like when people say that like how is that bad it's like it's like how is how is trusting you know, being able to trust someone you don't know to buy drugs from this person, knowing that these drugs come from somewhere and are like, you know, verified by, by several people. That's that to me sounds like supply chain trust. And, and I, I mean, Emily <laughs> talk about that a lot more, but no, but literally I think anyway, how can it be bad? That's, that was my point. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, I want, I don't want to talk about that because <clears throat> every time when, when I look back at like these, you know, clips from like the 80s and the 90s where people are like explaining the, f the future technology, but like, like right now they're like totally silly and you're like, uh, they didn't know how popular email would become, you know, <laughs> and like, and so I think to be honest, we have no idea. But what I do know is that it will, the impact will be probably a million times more than we can even imagine right now. And that's, yeah. that's typical of, of new technologies where, I mean, it's like Emily, when you say like we will we'll probably go voting and not know that it's on blockchain. I think we will have a generation. It, it's like the the youngest here, yeah, like your kids probably. They, you, you will have an, um, a generation that just does governance, like and and stuff yeah. like that. And th they would be like, what What did you do? Like you could go every four years, you could vote for something. And what was it like for politicians? And what is that? And I truly hope that. Um, I, I'm, I'm always a bit worried or, you know, if, if this works out, what we're doing, then why would you still have like these like big corporations and, and these entities? Because there's a way, efficient, more efficient way to organize us as a humanity and to produce stuff. And so I think the closest to the future economy we can like creatively think about is probably Star Trek, where, where we all just solved stuff like, you know, everybody has food, everybody has shelter, so that's taken care of. And now what will we do as a humanity? And and I hope the money problem will be solved. And and with with the money problem, I mean that's that that not not all money is created equal. And and with this technology we can do that. So we can yeah. create money for, for a student, meaning like you can buy shares in a student's, you know, you can buy yeah. futures for a student's um future uh, um revenue you know it sounds crazy i know but so i i do think that i or i hope and i believe that uh, the impact will be way 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 bigger than we can imagine even if we use our wildest imagination right yeah so so it's uh, we we need to uh, i mean uh, before i told the uh, education is fundamental because we need to make people understand that uh, blockchain is not just crypto and crypto is not just blockchain and uh, mm, there is blockchain technology which allows to do also crypto to make crypto but uh, there is a word behind it and i think uh, um for example emily can 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 talk about it even even more than me uh, but uh, in my personal experience DeFi, for example is uh, something that it's it's not just crypto is uh, a new financial system, right? Uh, more accessible, more transparent, uh, more inclusive, uh, and uh, uh, and and a, a lot in logistics, insurances. There are a lot of uh, of, of appliances for for blockchain. So, um, how do you think, uh, girls? Uh, uh, your uh, um, specific projects uh, or, or one of your experience. Um, helped or is helping in uh, 
in um, the mass adoption of, of this technology. Uh, we can start from uh, from Emily maybe because uh, she's basically working for a, a, a normal <laughs> company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, we're not a normal company. We're a very innovative company. <laughs> um, no, no, just, so um, I think we really, really contribute to the mainstream adoption of blockchain because we are this household name that everybody knows, that everybody trusts. Um, and when we say, okay, this technology does work, um, I, we bring a lot because, you know, kind of the premise of blockchain is that, oh, everything, you know, the code can be seen by everyone. Everybody can verify what's happening and what's going to happen. But the fact, the thing is, most people are not able to read all of that. They're not even able, able to read that code to, to you know, to <laughs> track the blockchain and audit it themselves. And this is really what we do. We can say, okay, you have the this white paper of a project and they're saying all these amazing things about automated transactions and, and this element is going to trigger this payment for someone. And that's amazing. But if you're not a developer, if you're not yeah. able to read that, you can't verify this for yourself. And this is really, I think, how, how we bring this trust that you know, you can you can just trust the technology, and that kind of fits in in my image that I was talking about of mainstream. That you can just it works, it's fine, we trust it, and we kind of bring this stamp of approval to say, okay, it does. Yeah. So we hope that your job uh, won't be needed anymore in few years. <laughs> because <laughs> like, I mean, I, we hope that everybody will be able to you know trust the uh, the technology without an intermediary. Well, it's a it's a complicated learning learning stack. I mean, to understand everything, typically a system yeah. like Maker. I mean, just yeah. when I studied it, it took me so long to you know yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to understand and I'm then still learning actually yeah because <laughs> you never stop learning I mean. exactly yeah yeah and, and if you want to go really down you know in the in actually the lines of code i mean the knowledge you need to to analyze a system like that is just you know yeah and what about you, Maria Paula? I, I know that you as you also mentioned you were also involved in a lot of uh, um let, let's call them educational initiatives, like, for example, the organization of it, Berlin, etc. So I think you also had some experiences uh, about uh, making, uh, trying to make a uh, blockchain and web free um, mass adopted. So yeah. let's tell us. So for the time being, we do actually need better education, but in order for everything to be a uh, truly mainstream actually blockchain needs to become an invisible layer i know that michelle will uh, agree here with me we are uh, at you know golem and swarm not building something that is you know very pretty and you know like really flashy it's beautiful in code it's beautiful in code but we're building infrastructure you know yeah. uh, in order to be for mass adoption to happen. I want my infrastructure to be transparent. I want people to be able to build on it as they join, you know, Google Drive and mm. not worry about the pipeline, you know, what about, you know, the underlying protocols, because that's not the job of, of, you know, normal people. That should be our job to make it so good that people don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I, I mean, if you want to add something, Michelle, since uh, you were mentioned, also, I agree uh, <laughs> about the invisible layer. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, the, the, our soft, the software that Swarm is trying to build is, I think, it's beautiful. But I know what you mean. It's like you can't see it. Um, well, what I hope our project will achieve is, um, is basically lead us away from data slavery. Um, currently, people are basically slaves creating content for big corporations, and um, and this content is being used uh, to get the attention from peers, from other people, and this attention is basically being packaged and sold uh, to the highest bidder. And the reason why this can happen is because it's really, really expensive to store data and to, to manage data. And um, so we, we give other parties, you know, all our data and all our trust, and so they can make money uh, with that. 
uh, with Swarm and also IBFS and other decentralized storage solutions, um, you know, users can be the owner of their data and, and keep, you know, keep control over their data. And basically this means that they can make money with their data themselves. And so if you calculate um, how much data is worth currently in the world, it's, it's, it's more valuable than oil. Like the oil market is less valuable than the data market. Um, so this, in theory, this means that every human being on earth could have like a minimum income just because they create data, just because they live and they, you know, they use the internet and they use apps. And so I hope that, that Swarm can contribute to that, to a fair data society where, you know, where people actually are being treated correctly. If they create content, if they create information, they should be rewarded for that. And so I hope we can help to achieve that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, all of uh, I think all of you uh, girls are really like um, doing uh, co important important stuff uh, to 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 bring uh, the mainstream uh, um, to blockchain and the blockchain to mainstream. So yeah. Uh, and about this, uh, since you are doing this, uh, I want to ask you what uh, it was uh, your very um, challenge uh, or what is being also now your, your main challenge uh, um, regarding, uh, regarding this. Uh, and uh, uh, what is your, and in particular, in your experience, and uh, what uh, uh, is in general uh, the, the main barrier to overcome. You already mentioned, uh, for example, Michelle, uh, you already mentioned the, um, the UX, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, what are, in your, in your opinion, uh, the, the main challenges uh, to overcome, uh, the main barriers? Uh, we can start from Emily again. Um, I think it might have been the, um the misalignment between the the business models of the old economy and the business models of the new economy so that that was before when i was a freelance consultant and you know sometimes you have um you know more more legacy players that wanted to explore how they can use a blockchain crypto smart contracts etc and and then it was kind of hard to make them accept this new uh, kind of paradigm with DAOs and with, you know, the token economics and, and a completely new way to organize a system where you're not in control, basically, yeah. because that is decentralization, right? It's that there is not this centralized Google, Facebook, whatever, yeah. that is there controlling everything. And that was a real yeah. issue that, you know, sometimes people would hire me on mandates and then, ah, yeah, but I don't want to, re you know, <laughs> really yeah, control. Yeah. Because the new is caring and especially the new without, uh, you know, central path as you, as you, uh, as you mentioned. So the building trust again, we, we go back there, uh, is, is fundamental. Uh, and what about you, Maria Paula? Um, yeah, sure. So, you know, the main challenge, my main personal challenge is obviously how to uh, you know sort of stay relevant with regards to what i'm building in the ever-changing blockchain e ecosystem but uh, the more wider challenge and uh, tapping along uh, michelle's point on making people aware of what their data means is actually for people to understand the different layers of value which data or you know control of their finance signifies so basically you know uh, i i actually like a lot to uh, you know think in philosophic terms on all of these and so and economic terms as well and there are you know three kinds of value that i that i usually take into consideration one is the use value so it would be data as a commodity and then uh, you would have the exchange value you know the monetary a uh, sort of value that you that you give the data and then the sign value and what does this mean the it's not the same to have a, to be the owner of your data or for you know a celebrity to be the owner of their data than a, for a corporation to be the owner of your data because the data the moment that it belongs to a corporation it becomes less valuable mm -hmm. it doesn't 
have the symbology of the person as well. So I think that people should start valuing, uh, you know, what their data means, uh, you know, what it what it means to, you know, have a part of you uh, owned by a corporation and try to embed the other values, you know, data as a commodity, which is extremely important, and data as an economic layer as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 uh, a good answer. Uh, I mean, uh, I uh, I can imagine uh, that for you. And and it did, do you think this is the? I mean, a gen general or just in your experience? Uh, do, do you think uh, that this is the, the the main challenge in general for Web three and blockchain to be? Uh, yeah, to be yeah, absolutely. Because you know even the technologies that we're building they have different symbolisms and different kinds of value not not there's nothing that is only you know one fold value economic value or you know utility value the technologies that we're building have such an important uh, philosophical uh, tint in all of us you know we're not building this because uh, we're building this because we believe in it we believe yeah. in it internet we believe in the advancement of society and in a fairer society so all of these things carry a lot of symbolism that give it a lot of value and right now the speculative value we fueled by the coins as well is sort of like taunting uh, that kind of special value so you know this this kind of thinking in my opinion especially with technology because all tech is political should be applied to every layer yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like to add to that because yes, the word the word that, that that you didn't say and I think it's so important is ideology. It's like like Emily is saying like I came I came into the space and I, and and she like the, the adventurous pirate kind of mentality or the hacker kind of mentality. Basically, that's cypherpunk, and it's an ideology that has been around since the uh, seventies, I think, late seventies. Um, and to me, the biggest challenge is. Um, you know, we we can find like like uh, Go developers and and you know all kinds of, of of developers, Solidity developers. That's that's not a thing. You can you can teach people how to code. You can teach people how to set up infrastructure and networks. But it's really hard to teach people ideology because this is something you learn when you're like I don't know a teenager probably in the in the, in the case of cypherpunk. And to me, the the um, the biggest challenge I think is to keep um, evangelizing people on why we are doing this and, and making sure that enough of us are still in the space uh, and believing the same thing, especially with, you know, mm. what companies like Facebook, etc., are doing is like they create, you know, different belief system bubbles, sort of. And we have to make sure that we, we keep believing the same thing. I'm always like really happy in, in meetings with the Swarm team when we you know, hang out after a meeting, like for a couple of minutes. Um, there is often this kind of credo, meaning we are expressing our beliefs to each other. And sometimes it sounds like an echo chamber uh, or a circle jerk, I think is what it's called in America. Um, but it's so important to, you know, to, to, to reiterate on why are we doing this and what do we believe in? And, and I think that's one of the main challenges. Like in our space, there's, you know, the last, one of the last DEF cons I went to, I, I was, and sorry, Emily, it's nothing personal, but there were so many consultants and finance people and, you know, like trading and enterprise and companies that I start to feel like, okay, where are my buddies? You know, we, sh we need to go to our Airbnb and just hang out there because, you know, I, I, and and it has come that far that I actually now I, I just keep I just hang out in, in the launch or like in the parking lot of, of crypto conferences because this is where my friends are. Um, so I, that's my biggest worry. It's like, let's not have a corporate takeover. Um, you know, it's it's there is now a there is a little hole now in, in UX onboarding on, on making it mainstream. Uh, I think this will be solved. Um, but yeah, that's to me the main challenge, like raising raising people, educating people with a certain ideology. Yeah. Can I just add something? Yeah, sure. I, that, that's super interesting what you're saying. And also, um, you know, when we talk about uh, the, the decentralized uh, um, organizations and decentralized governance and 
the, there's also one challenge that I see is that people, you know, the users um, kind of are used to kind of this fast food of apps and they don't have to do anything. They don't have to govern anything. They don't have to take any decisions. And I kind of also see, you know, this risk that people themselves are not really interested in decentralization. Like, oh, take my data. I'm, you know, I'm too tired to read the, the yeah. terms and conditions. I'm yeah. too tired for anything. I just want, you know, give me junk food of, <laughs> you know, that's already prepared, that's easy to use. And that's kind of, kind of difficult. I mean, we see that even with elections in politics, people don't vote, people don't take the time to learn you know, the things that have a direct impact on their lives. So, so that's also something. I, I would love to answer to that concern. Um, you, you know how you can make people stop eating junk food and eating salads? You basically pay them. You say like, if you're eating this salad and if you're eating like healthy, we will pay you for it, right? Because we want to research <laughs> the way you eat and we want to see you know how how you what which fruits and and vegetables you like most, and so this will be a very easy and convincing. Um, I'm I'm working on a prototype. It's just for fun, right? But I'm working on a prototype Insta Swarm. I call it like it's an Instagram, but you basically get paid because you are creating content and you are like you know you know it's watching videos and like advertisements and stuff like that. But by just creating this value and uploading it to Swarm, you create data and you get rewarded because you created data. And yeah. if you have the option, I, at least I try this with my kids, they're all teenagers, right? If I give them the option of use Instagram or use my app and you will get paid to use this. And if you use all these apps, you will have like a minimum income. It's Perfect. like it's such an easy choice, right? <laughs> I love your projects. It's so yeah, cool. <laughs> Involve me, Michel. Involve us when it comes uh, to uh, when when you launch it. Uh, oh it's, uh, no, I just make prototypes. I I don't launch stuff, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'll hand it over. It's, it is open source. Everything we do is open source. So I mean, okay. it's just prototypes. But yeah. that's great. It's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, I think uh, we we can wrap up uh, uh, with the very last question which is a sentence that uh, we used to often uh, uh, hear, which is, and I want you to comment on this, which is, ah, ah, blockchain, yeah, it's just a bubble. It will explode. <laughs> so <Okay>. comment. <laughs> I, I always hear this sentence. So I work in the blockchain. Ah, so you produce Bitcoin. And then, oh, yeah, but it, it is a bubble night, super hype. But then uh, it will it will explode. So can you please comment? <laughs> Who, sh should I? Should I yeah. um, MP, go ahead. So for me, actually, it, you, you know, whether it is a bubble or not, it's been a very long time for the bubble. Uh, then the dot-com bubble was also very, very long time. But, uh, you know, those bubbles, like, and the dot-com bubble helped to disrupt and to uh, and also got people to uh, monetize and make a living in different ways. So for me, you know, I don't care if it's a bubble or not. As long as people are earning money, doing fascinating things and disrupting, I'm cool, you know. <laughs> I completely agree. And I think in general, as you said, uh, um, it could be a bubble, but it's changing the world in the end and somehow. So it's letting something, even if it's a bubble. So, uh, Emily, you can go ahead. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. And also, you can look at another bubble, right? The the tulip bubbles that everybody talks about. Oh, you know, it's, it's the same. If you look at tulips, I mean, they're still a huge part of the economy in the Netherlands, right? And <laughs> they're still very much valued. So why not? You know, maybe I, I completely agree with you, Emily. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a given. I mean, it's like really a fact that uh, technology and and like our societal change always goes hand in hand with an economic bubble, and basically it's the way humanity does things. Um, you know, if we if we if I can imagine that if you go to the to Neanderthal times and we invented fire, there suddenly was a bubble of steaks, I guess, and or like you know like baked meats. Um, yeah, this, this is just what happens, right? Um, I think the bigger, what they actually mean by it, I think is um, that it's again, a money scam kind of Wall Street thing going on, right? We, we just came from, I think it's a bit 70s, 
silly and ironic that Bitcoin in the in like the first line of Bitcoin or the first block, there's like a, a link to the New York Times um, uh, of a 2008 of the financial crash, basically. And I think it's funny that now this all has led to a DeFi to a system where you basically have the same but on steroids. You know, you can have like instant crashes like almost every week. So I don't know. I I. I'm 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 actually very interested in in what will happen when the reserve currency when when the dollar basically isn't working as as it should uh, work and what this will mean for crypto and and especially in in the case of uh, Maker and Dai I wonder what will happen you know get, what, I know there are experiments being done with stable coins who are not packed to anything yet they are stable in value and i think that's like that's going to be really interesting to see like can we can we even come come away from a dollar and 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 the old economy and just have our own stable coins you know without even referencing fiat money yeah um yeah i think uh, you guys all all of you said uh, something very true um and uh, then i think we we are done for today and uh, i will uh, ask you guys uh, folks if you girls if you can let your uh, your contact here in the chat because this chat will remain live uh, basically forever uh, and uh, um, so if you can write there how people can contact you uh, and also Mm, I want to remember that uh, this link is also the recording of the of the talk. So if you post this link, uh, people can rewatch this uh, this panel um, uh, when, when they want. So if someone of your contacts want to to see it, you see right away. You know, like the new economy and the legacy, right? You both put your Twitter, and I'm like PWC. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, 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 as as um, uh, we uh, with Emily, we are uh, co-hosting uh, an, an event series uh, with PwC uh, and Maker. And uh, <laughs> the first time I was like, "What is this?" We use Cisco because at PwC you can't use uh, the normal, you know, platforms, uh, uh, easy platforms that we usually uh, use in DeFi in in crypto blockchain space. But you 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 will get there with pwc as well <laughs> okay guys uh, thank you a lot for being a part of this uh, talk uh, it it has been really amazing uh, he, uh, hearing from you and uh, uh, i see you soon and thank you again thank Bye. you so much thank you Bye. Bye.